First things first, I'd like to thank Sony Interactive Entertainment and PlayStation for providing me a review copy of Days Gone. Now I should make it known that I'm not labeling this video a review because I didn't manage to finish the game on time. I did however play over 20 hours of it which is about two thirds of the way in. That's plenty of gameplay, enough to be able to give you a good idea of what this game's all about. I'm not gonna lie to you, when I first saw this game, I found it to be the least compelling of the major Sony exclusives. It just never really caught my attention in a way other Sony first party titles have, so I had the expectation that this wouldn't be all that special of an experience, but I'm happy to say that I was completely wrong, that I completely underestimated this game. It took a few hours for me to settle in, but once I did, I was fully engrossed by this sprawling, hazardous, beautiful world and its compelling characters. Immediately striking was how pretty the game looks most of the time. Textures can look a bit muddy when things are seen up close, but when you zoom out and take a gander at the world and its myriad vistas, it is hard not to feel awestruck from time to time. I was especially impressed by the game's dynamic dynamic day and night, and weather effects. Seeing rain slowly ramp up and surfaces of the game world form ponds and gradually get wetter, or seeing snow start to fall and build up on landscapes is a sight to behold. Snow in particular always impressed me, with vehicles leaving tracks and footsteps leaving prints in a realistic manner. Character models can be a mixed bag though. During cutscenes, they are highly detailed and their animation is top notch but in-game some models can feel pretty low fidelity. Facial animations in particular feel limited during in-game scenes, with a fervor of some characters' dialogue often not matching their limited facial expressions. <laughs> Screw you! You wanna cope with Tonys, you little bitch! That's what you are, you little bitch! I'm gonna die here! Help! Let me get you out of there. I'm gonna die out here. All in all though, when you stand back and look at the whole painting, Days Gone's visuals thoroughly impress more often than not, especially with its striking vistas. It's only when you step forward, get up close, and look at the finer details that you'll notice a few flaws. I also found that some cutscenes did feel awkwardly directed due to an over-reliance on fade-out, fade-in transitions. Fortunately, stuff like this is easy to forget, thanks to the compellingly written characters that bring cutscenes to life. You play as Deacon St. John, who was part of a biker gang before the Freaker outbreak changed the world as they knew it, Freaker being the word this game uses for zombies. The only other member of that gang left now is your best friend Boozer, and the story begins as those two characters, now bounty hunters and drifters of this post-apocalyptic world, decide to take a long ride up north and start a new life. But plans don't pan out, things go awry along the way, the trip is delayed, and Deacon is forced to mingle with the myriad factions and settlements scattered about. It's in these settlements where Deacon will find safe haven, where he'll make preparations before heading out beyond the walls of safety, where he'll be able to sleep to skip time of day at player's convenience, and where he'll meet characters of interest whose backs you'll have to scratch to exchange favors. The favors they ask you to do for the betterment of their camps will serve as the missions you'll be undertaking to progress through the campaign. At any given time, you'll have multiple quest lines from multiple factions running at the same time, each color-coded differently and clearly distinguishable in both menus and in the sizable open-world map. Some missions will advance the main story, others will offer glimpses into Deacon's past, and others will be side jobs for settlements that offer insight into its inhabitants. My biggest complaint about these missions is that there are only a handful of templates you'll keep repeating over and over again. Templates include killing all enemies in an area, from armed members of enemy factions such as rippers and marauders, to gatherings of the living dead, bounty hunting and killing a specific individual, clearing freaker nests to reduce their numbers in that area and enable fast travel, using Deacon's tracking skills to locate a person or object, chasing after a chopper with your bike, sneaking around and trailing targets to listen in on conversations, gathering materials, and... That's about it. There are a few standout missions in the game that feel more unique and more memorable, 
but for the most part, missions feel very cookie cutter. Fortunately, the game compensates for all this with numerous positive qualities. For me, Days Gone's greatest draw was without question Deacon's story and journey. While the game does start a bit slow, while Deacon can come off as a generic tough guy at first, as the story progressed and the layers got peeled back, I felt more and more drawn to the character, and before I knew it, I was fully invested in his quest, his relationships, and his struggles. This is in no small part thanks to some great performances across the board that made character interactions feel very natural. You really do get the sense that Deacon and Boozer have been pals for ages. There's great chemistry between Deacon and his wife Sarah, and you can sense the history between Deacon and the myriad inhabitants and characters he meets throughout the world, all struggling to survive with their different methods, principles, and ideals. Yes, Deacon often acts like a tough guy with an attitude. He's always grumpy and irritated, but you do get glimpses of the softy and human underneath it all, and Sam Witwer, who you may recall played the protagonist in Force Unleashed, I might add as a fun fact, does a great job of balancing and conveying both Deacon's tough outer shell and his soft interior. I will say, however, that there are occasions of awkward dialogue, especially when Deacon talks, mumbles, and or rants to himself mid-gameplay, which he does very frequently in a way that doesn't sound quite right. Oh, where else? Yeah, that looks like the kind of place you want to call home, yeah. God damn it, what you all shit yourself at once? Jesus Christ. Oh, goddamn freaks. What the hell are you doing in here? Huh? Oh, this place is a death trap. Okay, gotta be careful, gotta be careful. Don't believe the lies. They look pretty broken to me, Cope, but hey, whatever you say. And nothing wrong with a little crass commercialism. I mean, I could use a... Mm, I that blows up real good. Okay, this is it. Yeah, oh, this camp is gonna be crawling. Oh, yeah, going on foot, nice and quiet. It's like he has this compulsion to narrate everything he's about to do, and it makes him sound kind of insane, like he just got out of solitary confinement or something, which can come off as unintentionally comical. Whereas cutscene dialogue is written very tightly with lots of nuance, Deacon's in-game dialogue and quips can often feel overwritten, like things could have been said in fewer words and with more subtlety. Furthermore, I've encountered moments of dissonance between Deacon's dialogue and what's actually happening on screen. For example, there are times when the game expects players to be writing Deacon motorcycle as a conversation is taking place, so Deacon will speak very loudly like he's trying to cut through the ruckus of the engine. But if you happen to get off your bike midway through that dialogue, he'll keep speaking loudly even when it's quiet and it just comes off as awkward. You're gonna like it there, kid. It's like I said, Iron Mike, he's um, uh, he likes to yell a lot. Look, don't let him bother you. You got that? Uh, anyway, there's this guy named Schizo. He bothers you at all. Well, just tell Ricky. Or uh, tell Addie. She's the camp's doctor. You tell her. And Addie's she's good. She's got medicine, you know, to clean up those uh, to clean up those cuts. I mean, you don't want to get infected. They're gonna help you out, kid. You can count on them, even if you uh, you know, even if you screw up. All right. Or there may be times in which Deacon is attacked mid-dialogue, but he'll still speak normally while struggling against the foe. Out here there ain't nothing but murders and murders. <laughs> There are also plenty of times in which dialogue got cut off because conversations began to crisscross and intermingle, or because you reached a mission objective too quickly. Stuff like that could get somewhat annoying. Let's just say that it's one of the few. This stuff isn't the biggest deal in the world, but it's noticeable. It can be jarring and can sporadically break immersion. Still, the game nails it where it counts, key story beats are well executed, and the main plot never failed to keep me hooked. The more I played, the more invested I felt in all of the characters, especially Deacon. I personally love that this isn't one of those grandiose, bombastic type of zombie games. It's much more mellow and focused on how people are coping and surviving in a ravaged, unforgiving world. Sure, there are elements of uncovering the mystery of the Freaker Outbreak's origins, but at its core, Days Gone is a character-driven zombie game. 
It can feel like Last of Us in that sense, and I'd be hard-pressed to think Days Gone didn't draw some inspiration from that game, but it is also its own unique game, it feels like it has its own unique identity. Not to mention that unlike Last of Us, which is more of a linear experience, Days Gone is fully open world. You'll be hopping from settlement to settlement and from job to job on your bike at your leisure, meeting new people as the story progresses, killing zombies, wild animals, and members of enemy factions who get in your way, scavenging for materials to craft supplies and repair items, and you'll occasionally find yourself so overwhelmed by free that you'll have no choice but to make a quick escape. All of this is tied together by solid core mechanics and controls that pave the way for some fun gameplay. Control layout in particular feels very intuitive, allowing players to smoothly transition between stealth, melee combat, and ranged combat, all further bolstered by an all-purpose equipment wheel that conveniently allows you to switch between weapons and tools, attach or detach suppressors, as well as craft and repair items on the fly. Now, stealth is a major part of this game, especially early on when your equipment, resources, skills, and stats are pretty meager. While I wouldn't say that resources are hard to come by, as you can find and scavenge crafting materials, first aid kits, ammunition, and motorcycle fuel with relative frequency and abundance if you're actively looting things around you, resources are scattered and scarce enough that you will consciously want to avoid thoughtlessly wasting them, especially given Deacon can only carry a limited amount of things at a time. The best way to conserve and moderate is by killing enemies in silence, whether through stealth melee kills that consume no resources whatsoever or suppressed gunshots to the head that only consume one bullet, both very satisfying to pull off, by the way, or by sneaking around and avoiding enemies altogether. Deacon's binoculars come very handy in that endeavor, as it allows you to tag enemies and keep track of their movement. But attempts at subterfuge don't always work out, and sneaking around isn't always an option, at which point you'll have little choice but to engage members of enemy factions or mindless freakers head-on. Melee attacks are particularly powerful when confronting one or a handful of enemies in close quarters. By default, you're always equipped with a boot knife, but you can pick up stronger melee weapons like baseball bats and machetes. The caveat being that picked up weapons have limited durability and break down after a few attacks, and you can only carry one of those at a time, so even these act as resources that you'll want to conserve and only use during emergencies. But when emergencies do strike, melee weapons can make quick work of foes, especially if you take advantage of Rowling's generous invincibility frames. Of course, there are times you'll want to take enemies down from a distance, especially when Freakers approach in greater numbers, or when battling members of enemy factions armed with their own ranged weapons. For that, the game offers a wide variety of weapon types, from pistols, rifles, shotguns, to crossbows, and throwable items like molotovs and grenades. Best strategy for ranged combat is to take cover, as you are not some kind of bullet sponge, and aim for the head, as that will kill most humans and creatures in a single shot. For larger enemies like infested bears or larger freakers called breakers though, you'll definitely need more than a few shots to the head to put them down. Now, I will say that one of the weaker aspects of Days Gone is that gunplay does feel unwieldy and imprecise. Moving the radical around feels very tanky, I found myself missing shots even when the radical seemed aligned with the target, and something about the way gunplay is tuned made it hard to aim. I tried adjusting aim sensitivity, but even when maxed out, aiming just feels frustratingly sluggish and cumbersome. It does help that Deacon has a focus ability that allows you to briefly slow down time before taking a shot, but for the most part, I always felt like I was fighting the game's aiming controls. Making matters worse is that the game often struggles to maintain a smooth 30 frames per second. The fact that it isn't 60 frames per second can already be felt, but frame rate is also noticeably unstable and dips are constant. And while it's never to the point where the game is unplayable, moment to moment gameplay does noticeably suffer as a result. It's not just gunplay, Deacon's motorcycle feels less like riding a nimble vehicle and more like driving a tank. Something about the way it turns, the half second delay between input and output, combined with the rocky frame rate, makes the bike harder to maneuver than it should be. My brain and muscles did eventually adapt to the tanky feel of the bike. I eventually got pretty good at riding Deacon's motorcycle, but it took quite a bit of time before I got fully acclimated. Now, despite some frustrations with sluggish gun aiming and bike maneuvering, I found myself consistently engaged with Days Gone's gameplay loop. In 
large part thanks to a compelling progression system. As you complete jobs and missions, you'll not only level up Deacon and earn useful new skills for melee attacks, ranged attacks, and survival, you'll also increase the trust level of individual faction settlements, thereby unlocking the ability to purchase new weapons and supplies, new parts and customization options for your bike, and new services. You can also gain additional experience points with every person or freaker you kill or every animal you hunt, and you can also gain additional trust and money by turning in ears from slain freakers in the bounty stand of settlements or parts of hunted animals in the kitchen stand of settlements. New skills for Deacon can grant you the ability to repair picked up melee weapons by spending scraps, increase melee weapon damage and combos, increase accuracy and ammo capacity on ranged weapons, allow you to spot enemies with survival vision, and a bunch of other useful stuff. You can also boost Deacon's health, stamina, or focus meters by finding what are called Nero Injectors, which can be found inside abandoned Nero mobile medical units scattered throughout the world, which also act as fast travel points and safe havens. And then increasing trust level for settlements up to a max level of three can unlock all kinds of new rifles, pistols, shotguns, sniper rifles, you name it, supplies like ammo refills, suppressors, grenades, and first aid kits, as well as new bike parts that increase speed, durability, and maneuverability. Worth noting is that every settlement keeps track of your credit separately, meaning money accrued in in one camp won't transfer to another. Each camp looks at your achievements and what they owe you individually and separately, essentially. Speaking of the bike, Deacon's motorcycle plays a very key role in Days Gone. It is your main mode of speedy transportation, you need it to fast travel at any point, and when you find yourself being chased by a swarm of freakers who noticed your presence, a genuinely terrifying sight to behold, I might add. You better hope your bike is nearby and strategically positioned for a quick getaway, lest you get overwhelmed. Your motorcycle is your best friend, so you always want to keep track of its condition and its fuel. If your bike gets severely damaged, its speed will be reduced dramatically, you won't be able to get away from freakers, and you'll have to spend scraps to repair it. If your bike runs out of fuel, it's just not going to run at all, and you'll want to either find fuel canisters or stop at a gas station. Repairing your bike does eat through scraps pretty quickly, and you can only carry up to 10 scraps at a time starting out until you increase that capacity with a specific skill. And on top of that, scraps are also used to repair melee weapons before they break down. So you'll want to avoid riding your bike recklessly as much as possible, as the cost can add up. As for fuel, while there are key points in the map where they can readily be found, it does take a bit of strategizing to make sure you don't run out on your way there. Fast traveling also consumes fuel, and if a destination is too far away, you'll have to make two stops, one to refuel and one to your target destination. Alternatively, you can refuel by paying a settlement's mechanic, but that doesn't come cheap and the cost can add up over time, so I try to avoid doing that by strategically refueling before arriving at a settlement. Now I do think that whether you find the motorcycle's maintenance mechanics to be engaging or annoying will vary from person to person. I personally found that it fits with the game design and what the developers are going for. This sense that convenience always comes at a cost in a ravaged world like this. I personally like that. I like that the game encourages you to be mindful of your resources. I like that some thought has to be put into transportation and fast travel. It infuses this sense of a post-apocalyptic world where survival is a struggle, where conservation and strategically working out how you use your resources can go a long way. This stuff also makes the motorcycle feel more personal, making it all the more satisfying to enhance your bike for increased speed and durability or to customize its aesthetics. The motorcycle very much feels like your baby in this game, and if you take care of it, it will take care of you. Now, with all that out of the way, be warned, Days Gone is rife with bugs and glitches and technical issues. Some of them are minor, like the occasional instance of enemy AI getting stuck in an animation loop or elements of the menu disappearing out of the blue, forcing me to go back and bring it up again. But others are pretty severe, like multiple occasions of cutscenes completely glitching out. There would be times when audio of dialogue would be out of sync with the cutscene. I'll bet. <laughs> hey, all right, if you come over, then I will make it for you, as long as you give me a ride home. All right, great. Well, you're gonna be a believer. And we'll grab a beer for myself on the way. Other times, audio would be completely absent. Other times, character models would rubber band without notice. There was this one time where a character model completely disappeared. He became completely invisible. And in the most severe case, this happened.
Outside of cutscenes, there was one time in which I glitched through the walls of a Nero medical unit while fighting a Freaker. And the thing about these medical units is that you first have to refuel and activate a generator to unlock the doors from the outside. But because I hadn't done that yet, I was stuck inside the compound with no way out, forcing me to restart from my last checkpoint. Another time during a mission, a character I was supposed to trail got stuck in an animation loop, so progression was halted until that eventually, after some time, rectified itself. More severely, in a similar mission, NPCs I was supposed to trail would just not move, forcing me to restart from a previous checkpoint. In another mission, the game kept showing me the same tutorial pop up about how to shoot while riding a bike, despite the fact that I had dismissed this a dozen times already. In another instance, a hunting mission directed me to an animal who was inside an area that I could not yet access. As for glitches outside of missions, while roaming the world one time, it started to snow and snow had built up on landscapes, but then when I entered and exited the main menu, the snow had completely disappeared. There were also a few times in which the bike's engine noise was completely gone while I was riding it. And then a few times I was attacked by wolves while riding the bike, but shots I would fire wouldn't register for some reason. So yeah, stuff like this is pretty commonplace throughout the game, and some of these instances can significantly impede enjoyment. It can be pretty frustrating when cutscenes glitch out, or when progression is impeded for any number of reasons. Fortunately, generous checkpoints does mean that you can easily reload the game, but that certainly doesn't excuse stuff like this. So yeah, more than anything, it is technical issues that hold Days Gone back. From an artistic and design standpoint, it's all there for the most part, but frequent glitches, an unstable frame rate, and tanky gunplay and writing controls hamper an otherwise memorable and worthwhile experience. But yeah, with that, I would like to conclude my impressions of Days Gone. Overall, very impressed. Overall, really love this game. So thank you for tuning in. Let us know in the comments below if you're considering getting this game and what you're looking forward to most. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, impressions, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.